Hello, everyone. I'm Yukihiro Takahashi from Faculty of Science, Hokkaido University. Today, I want to introduce the microsatellites. Microsatellite is a quite new methodology to monitor the Earth. And we are developing such kind of microsatellites for these uh, few or 10 years. So then we want to emphasize the importance, not only the technologies, but applications of this. So now we have two microsatellites in orbit, which has 50 centimeter, like this. Very, very tiny, but very functionable satellites. So microsatellites is like this. Compared to the big ones, very small. Large satellite has a dimension of few meters, and the weight of this are probably 300 kilograms or larger, even tons. But microsatellite is smaller than 50 kilograms or less. Then it costs about few million US dollars. It's very small. It's only 1% or less compared to the big ones. And we can do the fabrications very, uh, in a very short time. For example, we did the, our first microsatellite development in a year. And we can operate the, our microsatellite based on our user's purposes, not by the, the public purposes. Therefore, we can optimize the satellite and the sensors to the specific purposes. So, but on the other hand, larger satellites can carry a very big equipment. Therefore, the combinations of these are essential. So space remote sensing is uh, watching the Earth from space with a high sensitivity camera or very advanced sensors. Now, human beings is confronted with a very ki various kind of uh, global scale problems, such as you know, food problems or environmental problems or disaster problems, like, th like that. So to overcome these, these problems, the we, human beings, should monitor the Earth uh, in a very detail and also frequently. To realize this kind of new measurement, we want to apply the technologies of the microsatellite and its sensor. For example, we, Hokkaido University, developed a, a bolometer camera, which is a, a thermal infrared camera, which is used uh, for the detection of the skin temperature in the, airp in the airport. But firstly, we apply um, commercial-based thermal infrared camera to space use. And also, we developed the liquid crystal tunable filter for the first time in the world for the space use. These advanced sensors can, can be used in space to detect the colors, images at different colors, up to 400 colors in one device, with one device. And also, uh, we developed the very light and compact a telescope, so which has realized the few meter resolution. So this is the all, almost equivalent to the big satellites. So we successfully launched our second satellite named Rising 2 and also Uniform 1 on uh, May 24th, 2014. So uh, the, with uh, big satellites, the JAXA's big satellites named the ALOS-2. Uh, this is an example of the images taken by the Rising 2. The left side shows the image of the Fisher camera on board the Rising 2. This is the very strong typhoon appeared in 2014. The right side image shows the, uh, the meteorological, uh, meteorological satellites which is located in the geosynchronous orbit. It's far from the Earth. Due to the low altitude of rising two, 
the quality of the, the image is all, almost the same as the meteorological professional satellites. And uh, we developed the thermal infrared camera named the Barometer Array Camera, which, which is on board Uniform 1, the, another university satellite. Then we succeeded in getting the thermal infrared image of uh, Mount Ontake just after the eruption on 28th September 2014. And the, uh, our liquid crystal tunable filter and the telescop telescopic uh, imager realized the very high spatial resolution with uh, various wavelengths. For example, this one is taken in uh, above the uh, Niigata Prefecture of Japan. So this picture shows the five meter resolution. This is the world number one for the class of 50 kilogram satellite. Also, this is the example of the uh, uh, color image, but it's not RGB, but a very narrow bandwidth filtered image at 650 nanometer and 750 nanometers, taken by the rising two. From this image, we can draw a very uh, special uh, distribution of the vegetation. So the right side is the image of Google, Google Earth. So we see there uh, some green area like this, circled by, by the white line. But these are the very different if we look at the rising two images. So the, the blue line uh, circled are the, um, it's a pond or shrimp, a shrimp farm or a river. But uh, the other yellow shows the vegetation. So this kind of difference can be seen with rising two spectral images very easily. So therefore, we can apply various target for example, we can monitor the flood area and we can identify the vegetations, one to one trees, and we can predict the fishery locations, and we can estimate the growth, growth phase of the agriculture, or we can find the best to dig for the mining, or we can, we can see the forest degradations using this kind of advanced sensors. So we, we want to suggest the importance of mission design. Mission design of satellite consists of three stages. First one is the bus design. Bus means the uh, vehicle. Uh, therefore, the, it's, it's a frame of, of the satellite. And the second is the passenger. These are the, the, our advanced sensors. And last one. This is the most important. This is the, uh, the data utilization. The geospace science, hydrology, fisheries, or agriculture, and so on. So usually, the space development starts from the bus design. And next step is, is the, the payload design. And last one is the data utilization. But it's quite strange. We should start from the data utilization concept, and then to realize the, the necessary observation, we develop the payload design. And to carry these payloads, we should design the bus of the satellite. But it can be realized only with a small team, like a micro satellite develop development team. It's very difficult for the big satellites because it involves more than 1,000 persons so to, uh, in order to develop such a microsatellite and enhance the data utilization with microsatellite, we established a space mission center at Hokkaido University. And we developed the sensors and satellites. And also, we, uh, we try to communicate between the communities in different field sciences. So we are now uh, here in Hokkaido, Sapporo City, 
and a very big campus of Hokkaido University, and one of the largest building at no in northern North Campus is the Creative Research Institution, and only two rooms are dedicated to uh, micro satellite development. Then we but we can complete the, all the processes for the environmental testing of satellites in this small room. So we have a thermal vacuum chamber, clean booth, and a thermal chamber, and also we can, we can use the vibrational and shock test facilities in the next building of our, of our institute. And also radio wave dark rooms available too. We are not the standalone institute or centers, but we are involving more than 10 faculties or centers in Hokkaido University. Therefore, we can collect the necessary information to develop the satellites from technical point of view and also from the data utilization concept. This is the only one place where we can study the data utilization and also the development of the satellite. We now is uh, investigating how to utilize the data obtained by not only microsatellite, but also with the various kinds of big satellites. For example, we collect uh, the data for the forest fire. Then, but it's one satellite is not sufficient to monitor the, the forest fire occurring in the world. Then we collect all the data about the forest fire, and then we establish the way of alert to the public to send a firefighter to the place. So now we have two microsatellites in space, and one more next year, hopefully. Therefore, then we, can, we want to start the operation of, of the microsatellites like as a network, not an individual inst inst instrument. So this is a new concept, satellite networking. And in the future, we want to realize the international super constellation. Constellation is the networking operation of the satellite. Then we want to name it with uh, name it as Asian Microsatellite Consortium 48, because uh, this kind of uh, consortium is necessary to optimize the satellite uh, uh, performance and also uh, enhance the utilization of the data. And 48 satellites is sufficient number to monitor any location in the world at any time, continuously. It's amazing. It may change the space use itself. So to, uh, to make this uh, super constellation, I'm suggesting the Asian Marco Satellite Consortium. So for example, country A consists of uh, three groups. That is the bus design, payload design, and data utilization teams. And also country B will establish the same structures as well. Then we can communicate not only between the tops, but also each levels we can exchange the ideas and discuss how to use the data. This is the new methodology of space use. We should consider not only the satellites, but also airplanes or the bigger satellites, existing bigger satellites. Otherwise, we cannot we cannot uh, make the maximum output from the remote sensing. We want to call it as the smart remote sensing measures. About uh, the satellite development and the utilization, my idea is like this. Each country has own antenna and own microsatellites, probably one satellite or 10 satellites. But, uh, Big satellites is too much ex expensive to own by only one country. Therefore, we can share the cost of the larger satellite. Then 
we can, we can make use of the data, not only by taken by a microsatellite, but also by big satellite. This is the new concept of remote sensing alliance. So again, we, need, we have a lot of problems, worldwide problems to be solved. Then to, to uh, complete these uh, problems, we need a comprehensive monitoring and understanding of the Earth. But unfortunately, the space development has been done with separated part parties. Hardware development team, implement social implementation team, and instrument development team, and the policy makers. But it's not effective. We should get together. So therefore, Hokkaido University provides the human development program to cultivate comprehensive view of the space development. So for example, satellite and payload designer should understand the social implementation and also the policy. On the other hand, the policymaker should understand the somewhat details about satellite development or satellite technologies, which is changing all the time, year by year. So the conclusion is that like this, let's initiate revolution of space information under the international constellation with us. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>